Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 16 of Photoshop for Photographers. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you could create this ultra detailed grunge look in Photoshop. Now, it's actually not that difficult. There are a number of steps involved, so I encourage you to get a pen and paper and jot the steps down as we go. Now, to give you an idea, this is our original image where we started and this is after I did all the steps that I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna do this um, exact same image uh, here so I'm gonna get rid of all the work I did prior right here so I'm just gonna delete it so we're right back where we started and I'd like to mention that this image is courtesy of dollarphotoclub.com so I'd like to thank them for supplying this image for us to work on. Now what we're gonna do is I'm going to be saying a lot of keyboard shortcuts and I encourage you to learn as many keyboard shortcuts as you can for Photoshop. It'll make your uh, workflow be much more streamlined and efficient if you use keyboard shortcuts. Recently I saw a seminar by a brilliant photographer and he was equally brilliant in Photoshop but he never used a keyboard shortcut and it took him so much longer to do everything that you know he would have been able to do if he had used keyboard shortcuts because he continually had to go up to menus and fly out menus and things like that to get done what he needed to get done so I'm gonna say a lot of keyboard shortcuts just jot them down as we go now the first step is we made it we have to make two copies of the background image or the background layer so what we're gonna do is we hit command J twice on our Mac if you have a PC it's control J and you'll make two copies. Now, the top copy, we're going to change the blend mode to vivid light. You can see it really looks horrendous. Now what we're going to do is we're going to invert this layer. And to invert the layer on my Mac, I hit Command I. If you have a PC, it's Control I. And it inverted the layer. Now, <clears throat> the next step is we want to sharpen this layer. But because we inverted it, we have to do the opposite of sharpening and the opposite of sharpening is of course blurring so we're actually going to blur this layer but it is going to actually sharpen the entire job because the, as I mentioned the layer is inverted so we're going to go up to filter blur and we're going to go all the way to the bottom surface blur now the there are two uh, sliders here for you to dial in you know the number of pixels and the number of levels for your image and they are dependent upon your image what I found is on both radius and threshold anything between 30 and 50 usually works out real well so on this specific image I'm gonna dial in 40 pixels for the radius and 40 levels for the threshold now you may have to experiment a little bit with your specific image so we're gonna click OK now it's gonna take a second to render and once it's rendered you really won't see anything change but what we're gonna do next is we want to merge this layer with this layer so the top layer with the middle layer they call that merging down and the keyboard shortcut for that is command or control E and there we just merge the top layer with the middle layer now what we want to do is we want to get all the color out of this image now we could get a hue saturation adjustment layer and we could just dial saturation down but I don't want to do that because it actually puts a layer an adjustment layer on top of the layer stack I'd rather not do that I'd rather adjust the pixels directly so to do that let's get rid of this to do that make sure you're on the layer that you want to adjust and go up to image adjustments and go down to hue saturation now you can see this different looking dialog box popped up but it does the exact same thing we're gonna dial saturation all the way down and you can see we got rid of all the color we're gonna click OK so you can see there's no adjustment layer up there we did it right uh, the adjustment right to the pixels and that's what I wanted to do now what we're gonna do is change the blend mode of this layer to overlay now you can see we're getting there 
I'm going to turn it off. There's our original image. And you can see I teased out a lot of detail in the image. Now, let's kind of pause for a second. This might be good enough for you. If it is, by all means, stop here. The other thing is you may want to only apply this effect on your model and not on the background. Now, if that's the case, what you want to do is put a black mask over here and then paint in where you want the effect to go. And I'm going to demo it, but then I'm going to back out of it because I really don't want to do that in this image. But just so you know how to do it, here is the mask icon down here. It's a rectangle with a circle in the middle. But before I click it, I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key in when I click it, and that will create a black mask. Now, you can see it took the effect away. It's not there anymore. See, I, if I click this eyeball, you don't see any change because the mask, the black mask, is blocking it. Now what we want to do is we want to use a brush, get B for brush, and we want to use a white brush. So make sure this palette is white and black. If it isn't, hit D. And that will put the default white and black colors there. And if by chance you have black in front of white, you need it the other way around, hit the X key on your keyboard and you have white. Now as your foreground color, you have a brush. You could use a soft brush. You know, I have it all the way soft. It's up to you. And you can see we'll just paint in. Make sure you're on the mask, by the way. And we're going to paint in the effect on his face. Now you can see it's actually, you can see on the mask how it has that white blotch right there. Now watch, watch his face. I'm going to click it off click it on. So we just applied the effect to his face. Now as I mentioned, I really didn't want to do that. So I'm going to back out of this. So to back out of it, I'm going to hit Option Command Z on my Mac. It would be Alt Control Z on your PC. And I'm going to hit it once, twice, three times. And now I'm totally backed out of that little escapade to show you how to add a mask to that. Now what I do want to do is I want to intensify it. I want it stronger than what it is. So all I have to do is duplicate this layer. So again, we hit Command or Control J. And you can see I, I really intensified it. See, I'll turn that one off in there. You can see it really made it much stronger. Now, if one layer wasn't strong enough, but two layers was too strong, don't hesitate to adjust the opacity of that top layer. Just turn the opacity down and dial in the amount of this effect you want on your image. Now I want 100%. I think it looked fine at 100%. All right, we're getting there. Now to show you where we are, I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key in. When I click on this eyeball, it will turn everything off but that one background layer. There's our original image. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key in again and show them all. And you can see that's where we stand. OK, now what I want to do is I'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer. That's this icon right here. I'm not going to adjust any sliders. I'm just going to apply the layer as is. But then I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. Now you can see we're starting to get that kind of grunge look. Now what we could do is we could kind of adjust this shading a little bit. We could double click right here on right next to where it says black and white and we'll come up with the layer styles dialog box and in advanced blending you can see there's channels red green and blue and they're all checked just try unchecking some you can see that made it really green we'll do that eh, I didn't really like that what if we have red and blue checked I don't really care for that either I kinda like that I like the red not checked but the blue and green checked so it's up to you that's all personal taste and just click OK and we're, we have that adjustment now. Now it still probably has a little bit too much color for my taste. So now I'm going to uh, dial up the uh, conventional U saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to turn saturation down just a little bit like that. And I think that's it. I think that finishes off the image. So I hope that helped you guys that are interested in doing this effect. It's not something I typically would want to do, but I get quite a few emails with people sending me links to sample images asking me how to do this. So uh, hopefully this helped many of you. 
and um, good luck with it. I hope it works out. Now, I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you guys haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, that's it for episode 16. I'll talk to you guys soon.